Hi guys, how are you? My name is Kai Santusi. For who don't know me, uh, I have this YouTube channel and Instagram IG about comics. And today I'm here with a great artist known by Deadpool, Batman, and Fortnite. Outrage. I don't know if I'm pronouncing right. Is that? Yeah, okay. that's it. Okay. Um, Spider Man and more. A lot of comics. Uh, As me has a podcast to talk about comics, right? So that's right. I'm here with Riley Brown. How are you, man? Uh, good, good. Great to be here. Thanks a Did lot. Did I pronounce your name in the right way? Yeah, that's it. Riley Brown. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much. Sir, uh, for who don't know you, what, what do you do? Well, uh, how much time you work on comics? Um, I'm a comic book artist. Uh, I've drawn a lot of comic books over the years. Most, I'm probably mostly known for my Deadpool stuff. Um, yeah. Though uh, recently I've been doing a creator-owned comic called Outrage with Fabian Nicieza, who of course is the co-creator of Deadpool. Yeah. Um, me and him worked together on a lot of stuff at Marvel. And uh, and then last year I did the Batman Fortnite crossover, which was a lot of fun also. So yeah, uh, you know, I've done a lot of a lot of comics over the years. And um, as for how much time I spend doing it, I mean it's pretty much, you know, that it's my job and the deadlines are tight so that's pretty much the only thing i do other than watch the kids so yeah mr brown i have to say your microphone is amazing I, i'm hearing your voice and it's it's great uh, oh thanks yeah i well um i have a podcast called hypothetical island where i interview other comic book professionals and yeah. you know and animators toy designers and stuff like that so having a uh, good microphone is pretty much essential yeah it, it's to any podcast right so um yeah. you like comics i like comics so let's talk about this so um what were your principal inspirations when you started i think that it's an an uh, an curious thing to to ask to all the artists that came to my show because the reference is different right so what were yours um I you don't know. I mean, I always loved drawing ever since I was a little kid. And uh, I wanted to be a I wanted to be an artist and even a comic artist before I even started reading anything from Marvel and DC. Like yeah. I was always thinking about maybe doing a newspaper comic strip or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I was in middle school, I started reading Marvel comics And I was like, oh, man, this is it. This is what I love. It's all the action and excitement and adventure and stuff that I see in the cartoons that I liked on TV. Um, but it's all drawn by one person and it's all right there on the page. And so ever since then, uh, that was my, you know, that was kind of the goal. So nice. you know, I just followed that star. Um, and my main influences, pro I mean, I started off reading Spider-Man comics, but it was really like, uh, in the nineties, when the X-Men cartoon came out, I started mm -hmm. reading X-Men comics. And um, so it was a lot of Jim Lee and uh, Andy Kubert and that stuff blew me away. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you know, to this day, like when I look at that stuff, I'm like, Oh, this is just what a comic book is supposed to look like. Yeah. So uh, that's, so that's the stuff that I love. Um, and then, you know, there's a million other influences like, uh, You know, I, I love Olivier Coipel and Jimmy Chung. Those guys are amazing artists. And I love um, video game art, like especially the the artists that work on Street Fighter. Like I, I've got all those like Street Fighter concept art books that they always put out. Uh, yeah. And I've actually got a uh, X-Men versus Street Fighter um, arcade in the corner of my studio over there. Nice. So, uh, you know, that stuff's always some of my favorites also. That that's very nice. Do you remember what were your your first uh, comic book story? You you say it was Spider Man, but you remember how well, were the history? Yeah, you know, my first ever were when I was a little kid. Uh, the comic books that came with the Masters of the Universe action figures. Yeah, like the He Man. The, I don't know. Yeah, you're a lot younger than me, so no, the, um, I, I I I watched a lot of He Man when I was a kid. Okay. Okay. Well, the action figures would come with these little comic books that were awesome. Like the artwork in them was amazing. And um, so that, you know, looking back at it now, because now Dark Horse reprints all that stuff so you can get it again. Yeah. And looking at it, I'm like, oh my God, 
it's crazy how much of my art sensibilities came from that. And I didn't even realize it because, you know, I haven't even looked at the book since I was like eight years old or something like that. Yeah. And, um, but I'm looking, I'm like, oh yeah. Like the way they draw monsters and dragons and all this stuff, that's exactly the way that in my head it's yeah. supposed to look. That's so nice. that was, that was a pretty strong influence. Um, and then like the first comics I read, uh, I remember like what really kind of, introduced me to Marvel. I was at a friend's birthday party mm -hmm. um, and he gave out comic books as party favors. And uh, uh, I got a copy of, it was Marvel Team Up. I wanna say it was like number 51 or 52 or something like that. And it had Spider-Man uh, and the Vision and Scarlet Witch teaming up against Dr. Doom. That's and nice. um, it was drawn by Sal Bushima and I don't know, I just love that. Like Dr. Doom, I thought was awesome. And Spider-Man was awesome. And like all this stuff in there was so cool. Uh, and then um, not long after that, I picked up a, there was like a, a, a Spider-Man story also drawn by Sal Bashima that yes. had the X-Men guest star in it. And I knew who the X-Men were from, I just seen a few, you know, the cartoon was still pretty new, but I knew who they were. And I was like, oh man, Spider-Man and the X-Men together in one comic. That's like getting two for one. So, yeah. you know, I bought that. And um, yeah, I mean, then at that point, I was pretty much hooked. Like, <laughs> yeah. then it was just like buy as many comics as I could after that. Yeah, my first one, it was a an, an comic book for, for Batman. I always loved Batman. So yeah. I, I know what you're, what you're talking about when you say, when, when you see you have uh, 20 comic books on your, on your, on your, room and yeah. and we when you see again it's 200 and i know <laughs> at, at some point you you lost your account it, it's it's crazy but yeah. uh when you you started to work for marvel uh you've worked many times with deadpool right uh, yes. until until today uh, where did this love came from i i think that uh I love Deadpool, and so it's nice to see another another person that likes you. Yeah, well, Deadpool, he's a fun character, and I, I like your shirt, by the way. You have a, a keen sense of fashion, my friend. I, uh, Deadpool, honestly, it was just, like, kind of, like, I liked his comic. I'd read it before, and I always, you know, thought it was really funny. Like, uh, in college, I read a lot of Gail Simone and yeah. Udon Studios. Uh, Alvin Lee, I believe, was the artist. Uh, and I just thought that was awesome and hilarious and it was just a great series. Um, and then when I started working at Marvel, I started off doing a couple fill-in issues on the Cable and Deadpool series, which was written by Fabian Nicieza. And um, pretty soon, like I did a couple of fill-in issues and then they needed a new color or a new artist for the long haul. So I just, you know, got onto that book and I just really enjoyed it. There, there was something about, um, I think there was something about my art style that just like clicked with Deadpool where like I'm cartoony enough that I can do the humor stuff. Yeah. I'm, I've got enough like, you know, action and dynamic sensibilities. That I could do the action stuff. And a lot of artists go like all cartoony or all like super gritty and stuff like that. And so having a style that can do both and can get that full like emotional spectrum is something that really works on Deadpool and really worked for me. And I just had a great time doing it. Um, and at the time, Deadpool was kind of like, no, like nobody knew who Deadpool was. Like I'd tell people I worked for Marvel. They'd ask me what book I worked on. I'd yeah. say Cable and Deadpool. And they said, what's that? Of course, now everybody knows. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cable, um, Cable, you worked a lot too, man, yeah. with, with, with um, Deadpool. And I read a few comics of Deadpool because I uh, a, a few comics of him uh, interested me, but the mostly mostly part that I read it was your art, you know. Oh, so so that, thanks, that man. the the first one it was your art. So it's it's crazy how I'm here with you talking about Deadpool now. It's, yeah, <laughs> it's it's very crazy. And at least here in Brazil, Deadpool is a character loves for his movies than his comics, you know. Uh, if you if you had to indicate a comic for people don't know 
the character which you would choose um you mean if they didn't know who deadpool was what which one i choose to yeah yeah what, uh, like what who would i tell them i'd probably i mean batman obviously the batman Fortnite thing was huge um especially if they're anybody you know under the age of 18 then yeah. they definitely know who Fortnite is um or what Fortnite is i should say um so you know batman is a big one or spider-man you know yeah like yeah. those are the two biggest superheroes so yeah I agree. I totally agree. So, and did you watch, the, did you like the Deadpool movies? Oh my God. They were amazing. They were perfect. Uh, like they, I couldn't have hoped for more, especially in the first one when they slipped Bob in there. I thought yeah. that was brilliant because uh, me and Fabian created Bob. Like I was the first artist to draw him. And um, so seeing him in there, oh man, it was so good. Uh, and yeah, like Ryan Reynolds does such a good job as Wade like he just his sense of humor and his timing and like he just gets that character and embodies him so well yeah that like they just knock it out of the park and he whatever his deal is that he got um with you know first fox and now i guess disney uh well hopefully with disney cross our fingers that those movies are going to be as good but um like they like he gets to call a lot of the shots you know or so it seems to me like he gets to like he gets Deadpool on such a level and then he's also able to like do what he wants with it and you know the studio will might want some stupid nonsense but like like he forced them or not forced them but he fought and fought and fought to get to be yeah. R-rated so he could have like the um action and comedy and stuff that he wanted and they he just blew it out of the park so um it's great and then he embraces the character on such a level where he's doing all this promo stuff like way more than any other superhero actor yeah. and with deadpool the whole breaking the fourth wall thing it just works out like so perfectly well so i mean i i don't think they possibly could have done a better job with it i think yeah. it's just amazing i was asked to you now how is for you drowning when deadpool broke the the fourth wall how is it for you is that funnier than than make the rest of the comic book or, or how is this uh well, it's a lot of fun uh there's you, you know you something you have to be careful not to do too much because it's something i think if you got to balance it just right otherwise you can get old pretty quickly yeah. or it could kind of like break the you know overall narrative because you want you want the the readers to be in the storyline you know it's just every now and then you turn to them and wink and yeah. it just you know if you do it right it just adds an extra level um and then there's you know uh, you do funny things like uh you know like i i think i uh had an issue of dracula's gauntlet where he's like yeah fighting somebody blade i think and he's looking at his marvel trading cards to like learn what his powers are or something like that <laughs> that's and nice. i was like that's you know that's so like, that just struck you as a good idea um, yeah you know and so stuff like that is fun yeah i like i like too much it and in, in any comic that i'm reading uh especially she hulk i i think that you already yep. uh, read the she hulk from john Byrne. i think yeah i love that yeah so when she's in the cover with an and comic book of x-men and she she says something like Oh, if you don't read this comic book, I will, I will um, take fire on your burn your your X Men edition. So I think, right. it, yeah, I think it's very funny. <laughs> I, I like too much that the breaking fourth wall in in the in the comic books. I think that works better than in movies. You know, I I don't know. I think that it's because it, um, yeah. It depends how they handle. It. it depends on the movie and how they handle it. Like, um some movies do it really well like ferris bueller's day off is probably yeah. the best example I don't, have you watched that one yeah you know? yeah like he does a great job of like narrating to the audience and like every now and then turning and talking to them and like that is so good and deadpool like uh in the deadpool movies they uh uh reference ferris bueller directly at the end yeah. i think yeah um in Chica and, Chica. And there's, yeah exactly <laughs> Uh, and then you have TV shows like The Office where they kind of cut to these interview scenes as if it's like, as if they're filming a documentary. And I think yeah. that's a pretty clever way of doing it. Um, it. Yeah, I mean, as long as, 
it's a, it's a tricky thing to pull off right yeah uh and i've definitely seen it done poorly like i've seen it done in such ways that it's like oh you you just like you know broke the story like like you just pulled yeah. me right out of the story but if you do it right it enhances the story you just have to know that you can't always do it like you can't have wolverine do it like i've seen people try to make wolverine do it yeah and it just doesn't work like that's not what you want from wolverine yeah. but deadpool it's great ferris bueller it's great she hulk yeah. it's great like you just have to know you know you have to know how to do it and the offset too the offset i don't know if yeah. you yeah it, it's it's the the better use of of fourth and of breaking fourth wall that i can yeah. imagine Uh, we have Jim Hopper there, and yeah, that 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 that's great. I, I love the office. So uh, any any opportunity of talking about this, I, I <laughs> in on conversation. But still um, talking about superheroes. Recently, you did the Batman and Fortnite. Yes, story, right. right. And how were the how was the invitation to do this? Uh, did you already liked the game before? Um. I hadn't played it before I started working on the book. I nice. knew about it because um, I have a younger cousin who mm -hmm. was a huge fan of it. So, you know, I'd been to his house and seen him play. So I, I like I, I knew who it was. I knew some of the characters like, you know, Cuddle Team Leader and Rex and some of the guys that use in a lot of the advertising. Um, and but then when I started drawing the comic, I was like, oh, you know what? It would be really easy to draw the backgrounds and stuff. If I just played the game, I could yeah. just go to the spot where the, this scene takes place. And, uh, you know, I was just like, I'd stop there and my character would just be looking around. I would just take out my phone and take pictures. So oh I could have gosh. like the perfect reference. And I got killed so many times that way. I bet I just like imagine people like sneaking up on me and just like, what is this guy doing? Like, why is he looking at this bridge? He seems very interested yeah. in this bridge. Um, and, uh, Uh, so, so that I started playing and then, um, you know, that, uh, I think it wasn't long after, like, while I was working on it, they had the Marvel, like crossover series yeah. in the game, uh, not in the comic that hasn't, I think they're working on that now, but in the video game, they had all these Marvel characters. So I was like, oh, well, you know, I've got to get She-Hulk. I've got to get Thor. So, so then I started actually playing the game and I'm like, oh, this is actually a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, but when you were taking pictures, you don't, you w wasn't be killed uh, quickly. <laughs> Sometimes I would, and that was always very <laughs> frustrating. Like some, like there was, uh, in the first issue especially, because I really didn't know how to play very well. Um, I didn't really understand how it worked or like, you know, what, like when the storm would come or like why people were doing what they were doing. Um, But there was one like in the opening scene, I really remember this, like there was it starts off with like Batman is standing on top of a car on top of a mountain. Nice. That was something that was actually in the game at that point. And um, and so I was just trying to scout out around there and get a good like photograph of the car. And then he falls down the mountain and there's like a river down there and there was like a little bridge or something. I really wanted to mm. get a picture of that bridge. And like every time I'd go there uh i kept like having to run into people and eventually I'm like, okay, i have to like fight these guys so i can get a yeah. good picture of the bridge and you know it's like when you get killed in the first like couple of minutes it's annoying because it takes like a few minutes just to get into the game it's like, i just need that one picture just leave me alone yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, i understand your pain i tried a lot of times to to play fortnite i, I just can't i don't i i when i, I when i i am in the island some someone Kill me and I, I give up. I gave you, up. I, I, okay. I figured after playing long enough and now I understand the game pretty well. Uh, yeah. A lot of times what you have to do, you, if you want to just run around a little bit and not be bothered by people, you have to find a section on the island where there's no like missions. Cause there are things like every day there'll be a mission, like go do a dance at this gas station or whatever. And so if you try to land anywhere near that gas station, it's just going to be swarmed with other people. Yeah. So you kind of have to learn where those things are and then just go somewhere else. Yeah. And um, then you'll have plenty of time to just run around and, you know, drive cars and build stuff or whatever it is you want to do. I, I will give it a second chance. Yeah. A second, <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. It, it's not a second. Hey, you got to you gotta trade in one. those... You got to trade in those um, Batman Fortnite codes, man, and get your uh, armored Batman and run yeah. around. 
that's that's stuff that I, I, I like I, when when I don't know Thor it was in the game I, I you know I, I like this this nerd part that is on 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 Fortnite yeah th this reference um so um to, back into the comics <laughs> yeah for people who don't know Riley it's a um, writer too right you did yep. with Fabian the outrage I'm pronouncing right right Yep, there's a bunch of comics that I've either written or co-written with other creators. Uh, and me and Fabian have a great relationship where like our process is nice. very open so that I'm pretty much like in the co... I mean, it's very much classic Marvel style like Stanley mm -hmm. and Jack Kirby would do where Fabian kind of sends me a brief plot outline. Yeah, sometimes it's more detailed than other times. Yeah. Um, and then I will kind of just take that, you know, do whatever I want with it. As long as I hit the right, you know, the right scenes and everything, get that all in there. He's totally cool with me kind of going off and doing my own thing. Yeah. And um, then, and then I send that to him and then he adds the dialogue in afterwards when he's seen what I've actually drawn. And it's, it's been a great process so far. You know, we've worked together for years at this point. So we kind of like have a good, you know, a good, feeling of what the other person's going to do or you know what's going to work for them or what's not you know yeah that, that's nice uh where did this idea came from it, it was yours or for from fabian's uh it was fabian the, the idea for outrage you mean um yeah. that was originally fabian's idea he approached me with it uh we were working on a deadpool book at marvel i think it was deadpool and cable split second nice and um And so it was right around the time that the Deadpool movie came out. And uh, uh, he was like, Riley, I'm so tired of seeing my stories up on the screen, making them money. Let's do something that we own together. And, yeah. um, and, and there's this idea he'd been talking about for a while uh, you know, that turned, eventually turned into outrage. I can't remember if it already had a name or not, but it, it was basically the idea was that it's like you're on social media And, you know, if you, someone posts something, how yeah. often does somebody post something on social media that makes you wish you could just reach through your internet screen and smack the guy on the other side? Yeah. And it was like, and he said, well, what if someone could actually do that? Um, and I was like, <laughs> at first, I was just thinking like, oh man, that's such a good idea. Whoever <laughs> he does that with, like, is really lucky. That's going to be awesome. Then I was like, wait, I think he's asking me to do it with him. Yeah. So, <laughs> so then you know, we were having a meeting and I, I was just, we were just, you know, about Deadpool, I think. And then we started talking about this outrage idea. And I said, okay, like I, in my head, he'd look like this. And I started drawing this character design. He said, okay, now you're designing the character. So now you're in. And I'm like, okay, yeah. cool. So that's how, it, that's how it all started. That's nice. What, what you're talking about, uh, Fabian, that, that he, he said he were, were, were tired. Is there anything uh, you John you have done in Deadpool comics that you want to see in the future movies or something like that? Um, I mean, there's a lot of little jokes and stuff that I think are funny here and there. But the main thing is, I think it would be really cool if they could introduce Shikla in some way. Yeah. Um, every you know anyone who hasn't read Shikla is a character we introduced. Me and Jerry Duggan and Brian Pusain, uh introduced in. Uh, Deadpool Dracula's Gauntlet and she's this you know vampire demon succubus character who ends up marrying Deadpool at the end and then she was a regular character in the series for, for about five years or so um, and uh, and I just I think she's a really fun character and yeah. I think that there's a lot that you can do Well, you know, if you if they're tying Deadpool more into the whole Marvel universe, uh, I, I just think it's fun. And I think and, and I think what I thought when I first created Shikla was that Deadpool doesn't necessarily need a wife, but he yeah. really needs a crazy ex-wife. Yeah. And so um, I think that would be fun. And there's a lot of crossover potential between her yeah. and, you know, Doctor Strange or Scarlet Witch or some other magical monster type characters. So, yeah, um, you know, Kevin. Uh, Kevin Feige, if you're listening. <laughs> yeah. And, and how are, to finish it, to finish the interview, how are your, your expectations to Deadpool on MCU? I mean, I think it's going to be great. Like, uh, honestly, 
Um, I think everything Ryan Reynolds has done has been great with Deadpool. I, I think he really gets the character. And I think that the guys making the MCU, they really seem to get the characters and understand what makes Marvel yeah. tick. So I expect that it'll be, you know, two great tastes that taste great together. Um, yeah. And uh, I have no idea how they're going to introduce them because, you know, Deadpool's already an established property. So, like, I, I mean, with the breaking the fourth wall thing, they could just have him show up and be like, yeah, it's a new series now. Yeah. But it's still me. So uh, let's just go. Or yeah. they could do some multi dimensional, you know, multiverse of madness stuff and um, say, oh, yeah, this reality merged with this reality. And so now they're all here. I mean, I don't know if any of that really matters. Like, like you know, but yeah. uh, I'm sure they'll figure out something that is great. Something like the same that they made with that that jokes he made with yeah Ewan Ewan McGregor I'm, I'm crazy uh, um, Patrick Stewart and uh, uh, James yeah. McAvoy exactly exactly um, yeah. or with Hugh Jackman or like in some of the you know yeah. Twitter stuff like it it would be so easy for them to just make it a joke or take it seriously they they're it's really open to them and I'm sure they'll come up with the best way to do it yeah. Thank you so much, Mr. Brown. Uh, I, I tried to be faster than I could. So I think that's it. Thank you so much for a second. Okay, no problem. Man. If the people don't know you, uh, where they can find you? Where, what, what are your social media, your podcast? Um, you, well, you can, yeah, definitely check out my podcast. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's called Hypothetical Island. Yeah. Uh, and it's something I do with, my co-host um george o'connor who's another comic book creator yeah he uh he has a very successful line of graphic novels about the greek gods called the olympians and um me and him actually used to share an art studio studio together in brooklyn with a bunch of other comic book artists nice. and um we well while we were drawing together we would just kind of joke around and we one of the our favorite conversation starters was the hypothetical island which is where like you know the idea is if you're lost at sea and there are two islands one of them <laughs> you know is full of man-eating dinosaurs and the other one yeah. is full of man-eating sharks or whatever like <laughs> which one do you swim to and live out the rest of your life on oh my and God. um so for our podcast so over the pandemic we were kind of like just talking on the phone yeah. and We'd always thought about, we tried a few times to start a podcast while we actually had a studio together. But during the pandemic, we were just stuck at home and we were like, man, like I miss talking to people. I miss talking to other artists. We should actually get that um, podcast going. And so we did. And we've been going for a little over a year now. And we've uh, inter uh, interviewed a different um, artist of some sort every week. Uh, mostly comic book artists and writers, but also a bunch of animators and toy designers and stuff like that. Um, and we always start off with the hypothetical island situation, which is uh, a lot of fun. Uh, it makes it a little different than just the typical interview show. Um, and so, yeah, so yeah, definitely check, check that out. Um, and then as for other social media, uh, you can find me, I'm pretty active on Instagram yeah. um, and my Uh, handle there is at uh, Riley underscore Brown. So R-E-I-L-L-Y underscore B-R-O-W-N. And it's the same on Twitter. So um, yeah, feel free to reach out and follow me and see what I'm up to. That's great. How often do you, you post the podcasts? Uh, the podcasts are once a week. Oh, that's great. That's great. Thank you so much and see you.